This is the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast, and we're here to build autonomous athletes and put phenomenal programming into every garage, basement, and spare bedroom out there. I'm Jared Moon, and I'm with Joe Courtney. We are strength and conditioning coaches who have turned over 20,000 people into garage gym athletes over the last decade. And we're here to reduce the information overload that exists in the health and fitness industry today. We're going to do that by covering relevant science and give actionable takeaways, not only from the data, but from our years of experience. So let's dive in. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Garage Gym Athlete Podcast. Jared Moon here with Joe Courtney. What's up, Joe? Hey, two in a row. If, yeah, we depending on how the order we publish these in. He's he's here uh, again. So yeah, we're gonna we're gonna be updating updating everybody at Garage Gym Athlete. Um, no science today. No tips or hacks. Um, so if you are really just interested in what we've been doing uh, in our training in our lives, how we've been kind of balancing it all, uh, where the hell Joe's been, all those kind of things. If you want to get into, if you want to hear those things, stick around for this episode. I just want to be very upfront with what this episode's about way more casual and just giving everybody updates, um, kind of behind the scenes with a uh, garage gym athlete. Well, let's start with you, we Joe. Might, You've been, Oh, go ahead. We might not have official science, but we always have tips. We always got tips. We got tidbits. We always- no, he's doing something. There's there's a nugget that you'll get for sure. I'm not saying there's no value here. I'm just uh, <laughs> just letting everybody know uh, that we're not getting into how much protein you should eat or whatever else. Um, so anyway, Joe has been absent for a while. Uh, what's up, man? Where you been? What you been doing the last couple of months? Yeah, so mid December of 23, we. Uh, moved from California to the road trip. And now we are in Spain. We got here mid January. So we had about a month of <laughs> driving cross country from California to Virginia, making a bunch of stops along the way. Did a lot of fun stops, uh, Zion, uh, Durango, and then visited family in Dallas and St. Louis, and then ended up on the East coast, seeing my family and friends and stuff. And then we flew to Spain. So now we are in Spain. And as of a week ago, Exactly. We moved into our house, got all of our stuff in at the same time. Um, been moving in this past week, been ordering stuff, getting everything hooked up, still hooking some stuff up, but we're, you know, we're 90% moved in. We did it all pretty quick. Um, still adjusting for, especially my office is like the last thing. Cause there's a whole lot of, you know, internet and power stuff to get set up, but that has, that is what I have been up to where I've been and why I've been absent. That's a, that's quite a journey. California to Spain. Like you just look yeah. at a globe. That's a, it's a far hike. Um, so have you worked out in the last two months? Yes. <laughs> All right. Good. There was so, a, there was a, there was a hiatus for, a, for like two or so weeks. Um, for sure. <laughs> yeah. So, um, let's, I, I want to dive into that because I think that's some of the hardest times, uh, to stay, stay in, fitness is when you're traveling and not only traveling, like there's, there's a vacation where, you know, you're gone for like four to seven days or whatever. And it's like, okay, I'll try to get in like two sessions or three sessions or whatever, but traveling for two months, um, you've got a young kid, you know, and going across the country, no real, you don't even have your stuff, you know, you don't have like your gym. What have you been doing? How have you been trying to stay on top of some sort of fitness routine when your life is all crazy like that? So the first couple of weeks, it was a lot of hiking. We did because we were in Utah and then Colorado. So we pretty much just hiking and walking around, not not actual workouts. Uh, just before our last night, before we hit um, reached Dallas, we actually went to the hotel gym. We do we did bring bands. We did have bands in our suitcase, so we used bands a little bit, not as much as I would have hoped to, but that's how we did. Once we got to Dallas, we um, went on runs because there was actually it was actually. We were actually able to run there. We were, I didn't think we, we couldn't really run through like Durango and stuff. It was like a little snowy and icy. So we, we, we did some running there, um, did some other, I, I popped in to, to your house and we did that workout that you guys made me do after going out to lunch, <laughs> just sprung that on me. Like I come over and you're like, Hey, we're going out to lunch. It's like, all right, cool. I guess we're not working out. And then you're like, all right, we're going to go work out. And I'm like, well, shit, my stomach's full. Um, anyway, <laughs> yeah, that wasn't fun, but I did it. 
Yeah. Um, and then, yeah. <laughs> and then we had another week or so when we were in North Carolina and I actually, um, I had to go back to California for guard stuff and I actually like hit the gym whenever we had the opportunity to hit the weights, we hit the weights whenever we had openings and it was like, uh, clear enough to go for runs. We went for runs, even when it was because when we were in Dallas, it was freaking cold. Like our when we left out for our runs, yeah. the fe- the feels like was were in the twenties, which was not pleasant. But we kind of just had to do it. So it was sort of working with what we got. And um, in Norfolk, we had there was like a treadmill in the the hotel. It was also super cold there, so we just used it um, there as well. And I did. Liz had to go in for, for some work stuff when we were in Norfolk. So I was doing so uh, push-up grids or grids. I would pair mm-hmm. like superset grids. I would pair that like push-ups with the core or like squats. Um, and I did that like every 30 minutes. I had an alarm going for a couple of days. Then we got here and we've actually been able to um, go to the gym because. Yeah, so once we got here, uh, Landon already had daycare lined up. So, like, right away, we were able to put him in daycare. I could go to the gym. I just had to walk there. And, um, yeah, it's been five, six days a week that we've been working out. And as you can see behind me, if you're if we, if we publish this on YouTube, my gym is behind me. Got all my gym stuff here. Um, and so training's been doing good. Uh, perfect running weather today, at least. It's been, yeah, so been back at it. Last week, had a little bit of... Um, a hiatus because we were doing moving stuff and we had to be here and stuff. Yeah, and now you have so this amazing, downs. amazing basement gym, or at least amazing in size, right? It's, uh, does it span it's, the entire house? It spans more than the house. So, wow. like, you can see, like, the ceilings are probably nine, nine feet, um, at least, maybe a little more. And then as it goes out where the where the house ends, it comes down to like right at six, six one. And then that's like where the patio is like, so the outside, it's still part mm-hmm. of the property, but not the actual house. So it goes beyond what the actual house square footage is. Um, yeah, it's pretty awesome. I, it's probably long enough to do, uh, what is this about 30 meters, like push, like sled push or something. That's awesome. And then, yeah. And the, it is a, since it is a garage, it's in the basement, but since it's a garage, it does have a driveway that comes down on the side. So I could, if I wanted to run out and up and and stuff, but I don't really do a lot of those types of workouts. If I'm doing anything with like a cardio element, I just get on the the rower or the air bike. And what's the, what's the weather like in Spain? Right now it's nice. It's, I mean, there's, there's been days it gets, it'll be in in like the fifties. Um, like later this week, it'll be high fifties, low sixties today. It's probably going to be right around 70. Uh, I can. I got the thermometer on my gym thing. It's 66 degrees in here and 69% humidity. So it's about, usually it's about 60, 70% humidity down here, mid to high 60s in the basement. It's fairly humid, but I think yeah. that's pretty common with basements. It'll, yeah, it'll be worse in the summer. Um, it does get pretty hot, like 90 degrees, 90, 100% humidity. So we'll see how the basement goes. I know that the moisture inside houses are a bit of an issue. We already have a dehumidifier that I'm running down here around the clock. Um, so summer will get hot and muggy and sticky, but I think I'll still be fine. I, I, I'm okay with, with a bit of heat, especially after Bahrain. I mean, just, I'll, I'll yeah. be good. It's all, all easy from here. Yeah, it's Bahrain, nasty. Uh, I mean, San Diego, Monterey, you've been in some pretty mild situations. Yeah. Too, climates. Monterey uh, was less desirable. It was it was deceptively cold. You look at the temperature and it might say 60s, <laughs> but like the breeze coming off the water, it was like 10, 15 degrees, like yeah. wind chill. So you're 50. <laughs> so it, like, it, it might it, feel like 50. <laughs> 40s <laughs> yeah i mean i think that's i think like the perfect fitness temperature is probably like well i think for performance it's probably like 50 in the 50s i think if you want to sweat it's probably in the 70s um yeah but that's awesome man well i'm glad that you're back on the podcast i'm glad that you're getting settled and and how long are you in spain for two years nice 
That's awesome. Probably two and a half, maybe. Yeah. So good chunk. Well, uh, more or less the same for me here um, in Texas. I I mean, we do have a lot going on. We are uh, building a house, trying to sell a house. Um, that makes things like a little outside the normal routine, but nothing compared to like moving across the country and not having a house for two months, being homeless and all that kind of stuff. So I don't have, <laughs> I don't have much to say in that regard. Um, I've been pretty consistent in training, just knocking things out. Um, I think I'll give a quick update just on 50 K training and, um, some new protocols I'm talking about. So recently did a podcast called the future of fitness where I think things are headed and what I want to experiment with. And I just recently started some of those protocols. So if anyone's been following along with my kind of 50 K training, I've been doing running basically three days a week. And then the other three days a week, I've been doing strength training, specifically uh, body geometry, which is our like one of our strength uh, training methodologies. And now I am transitioning in this uh, more recent block to still running three days a week, but I'm trying more mixed modality training those other three days. So I'm really experimenting with these protocols before I bring them to Garage Gym Athlete. And what they are, um, some of it's interval weight training, which we do at Garage Gym Athlete. Some of it's like EMOM stuff, but like really long EMOM stuff, like 40, 60 minute EMOMs, things like that. Uh, to where we're combining, what I'm trying to combine is work to rest ratios. That makes sense with some strength training, enough volume to actually still get stronger. Um, but then also adding like a heart rate element into it. So like having a, let's just take interval weight training session. That would be VO two max, uh, beneficial. So it's like higher heart rates. Like you need to maintain zone four for the interval weight training session for each round. Then you come, you come down, you recover after each one. Um, those, those sessions take about an hour, the EMOM sessions. So I might have like a 60 minute EMOM session where I'm going for a full hour. I might have four different movements, um, four to six different movements that I'm switching every minute on the minute. And some of them will be strength training. So it'd be like a push press. And then next I could be on the rower. Uh, then it could be a kettlebell swing. And then it's really just adding these things up to try and get enough of a stimulus for strength training, but also following some sort of heart rate training protocol um to see benefit in that regard as well so this is in my opinion this is pushing concurrent training to the limits of what can be possible and i really don't know what's going to happen um i mean obviously everything's gonna be fine like i'm not it's not gonna be crazy i'm just talking about i don't know if i'll get a lot weaker or lose muscle mass or gain muscle mass or get stronger like there's a lot of uh, science that this can go both ways so i'm i'm experimenting with it a lot I think right now though, like overall enjoyment level is like 10 out of 10. I love, I love and always have just like grunt work, like just, okay, those are the things that I need to do for the next hour. Like, let me just move through them. I actually, as much strength training as I have done in my life, I don't, I don't love just doing, doing a set and then resting for two or three minutes and then doing another set. I've always just preferred to be moving, even if it's like a strength movement, you know? Um, so that's, that's just my preference for fitness in general. Um, but those have been going really well. Nothing I can tell you on like results side. Um, other than I think I'll be, I'll just get in way better shape. Like, even though I'm running already, I think if I have some, I basically have some sort of cardio element six days a week, as opposed to three days a week. Now, I just think that I will get fitter in general but what happens to strength and muscle mass i don't know but there's also i was looking at a lot of research that says there there has to be like this metabolic waste involved in gaining muscle mass like you can't just go do three sets of 10 and it and get stronger and and gain muscle maybe when you first start uh there has to be there has to be an insult to the muscle there has to be that micro trauma there has to be metabolic waste so the these um, heavy loads, you know, thrown into these, this type of training session. Um, it's quite taxing and I, I feel it a lot more than I would in a strength training session. Um, I feel more of a pump. I feel more of a burn. Um, so I'm very interested to see where this goes. So I really think it's, it's headed in a, in a cool direction. I really enjoy the training. You think you're going to take some of that to the next cycle of hard to kill? Yeah, that's, that's the plan. Like I want to bring it to the next, uh, cycle, hopefully the second cycle. Let's see. 
as at the time of recording this. Yeah, I'll be able to test it for a solid six weeks before I decide what I want to do. Probably not the full protocol where that's all you're doing like I'm doing, but at least some of those ideas bring them to the next cycle and hard to kill. That's uh, ultimately my goal. So if anybody's interested, I've mentioned this to several people and a lot of people are very interested in it, like more so than I thought would be. People are like, oh, dude, the second you get that going, like, let me let me know. I want to be a part of it. Um, and I didn't think that'd be the case. I thought it'd be more of a turnoff for people. They'd be like, uh, no, I'd rather just do my strength and then my conditioning or whatever. Um, because this is, this is different than anything. Like I talked about CrossFit in that future of fitness episode. It's different than all those things. It's, it's trying to take everything I've learned from endurance and how to actually improve endurance and adding it to like the strength world and like circuit training. Um, like some of the papers I've read on this even go back to like 1969. Like that's how far back some of this type of training goes. Um, so it's, it's really cool. Now, as far as running, um, I also talked about that in a recent podcast episode and not a lot has changed there. So, you know, I, um, hurt my back again, and then, uh, my run coach kind of fixed it through improving my cadence. Um, and that's just kind of held strong. So that's still going. It wasn't like a fluke. Um, I'm running three days a week, decent amount of volume, still not as much volume as I was doing. I've uh, pretty much figured out my cadence. I'm I'm hovering in like the still 170 to 180, probably 175 to 180. Really, I'm I'm pretty much landing my cadence in that higher range, um, and I'm feeling a lot better. Um, my body feels a lot better. I still am running a little bit slower, which is, has been a little bit frustrating. Like I can't. I have to be so mindful with a faster cadence to like run at a higher speed. Like it's very. I feel like I'm doing one or the other, like I'm going faster cadence, but I'm going so a higher cadence, but slower overall pace. Um, and then my heart rate's like way too low. It's like in, like in the low one thirties. And then I try to, I go faster. And then like, once I'm going faster, if I'm not focused, I'll lose focus on the cadence and I'll go revert back to my old running form. So it's still a lot of work. And that makes sense to me because I run the same way incorrectly for, uh, I don't know two decades and I'm trying to like undo all of these running patterns and poor movement patterns and like this low cadence that I had and all this kind of stuff. So it's still a lot. I am like finding more of a groove with it and learning how to do it. Um, but it's still, it seems to be the best, best fit for me because I'm not hurt right now. Um, and I don't, I don't think I'll go back to high volume. I still plan on doing the 50 K, uh, but I'm just going to kind of be like, Hey, I ran as much as I could run without getting hurt. I'll do the 50 K see what happens. I won't be as prepared as I wanted to because I should be doing like three hour runs and like all these kind of things that I was doing before, but, um, I'm just not doing it all. I'm doing as much as I can while balancing a new run for new running form and not getting injured again. So that's, that's kind of where I'm at with 50 K stuff. I guess I could say my, well, my side of that as well for, um, for running. I, I was talking about my heel pain back, a while before and I, I did get a running pt that i saw um through video a couple of times and i just happened to while, while on the road trip he's he was located in maryland i actually happened to see him in person and i got an in-person console and i still uh, in touch with him um to the internet and so while traveling i have been working on some of that some of the exercises um a lot of mobility stability stuff and then as well as the running form like changing my running form has been a process and getting used to it and because i was over striding um and yeah that's I, i'm still, still working on it with with my zone twos but i also know that i need to not just do zone two run i need to actually do some speed work so now that i'm here and more consistent i'm making myself do um you know only limiting myself to i guess one zone two run um a week and making sure that i do at least some speed sprinting like uh, running um once a week as, as well, because the weather here is just good enough for that. But it's, since it's, it's good enough to start running and, and, to, I ran today and I, I think it feels fine, but it's still afterwards, my heel, my heel still has some issues, but like everything it's, it's a, it's a kind of a slow process. When you say over striding, what does that mean? Like I, my front foot is going out a bit too far. So, so like I reach. think I, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, um, I think it, it makes my hamstrings work a little bit too much and put too much stress on my heel. So I need to essentially put 
my I, and put my foot more more so under my center of gravity mm-hmm. and have my quads sort of cushion more and i noticed when i when i was doing my all my form running i was going to my first couple of runs my quads were like super fatigued afterwards because it just wasn't used to catching myself on that position as much and um yeah so it's it, it's been a process but you know it's i think it's already sort of um catching on yeah my first couple of runs with my higher cadence um i felt it m- muscularly like you're saying like i it was like in my hips and like kind of my hip flexors upper quads like i felt it a lot more um that kind of it only took a couple runs for that to kind of go away but yeah it's it's it was definitely an adjustment um and another thing that you mentioned too much zone two like that's that's what i was doing i don't know summer fall of last year like i was doing all this zone two but it it was too much because, and, and I, I want to talk about this mainly for the listeners. Um, <clears throat> cause zone two is awesome, but zone two is like, it's building a foundation. That's all zone two really is. So if, you know, just to take that analogy of building a house, like if all you did was like build the foundation and then you come back out the next day and you're like, Oh yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to sweep the foundation. I'm going to, I'm going to smooth the foundation. I'm going to pet my foundation. No, you got to build on top of it at some point, right? You got to, you got to start doing the other stuff that builds the house. And that is the VO2 max, the intervals, all these other kind of things. Because, um, I, how I look at that now is like, if you, if you do build the foundation and you never build up, you never build the VO2 max, you will stall. And some people need a lot more VO2 max for us. And this is my theory too, is that we already get enough zone two training through like strength training and all the other stuff that we're doing, not just zone two running that we do have a pretty solid base. So we need a lot more top end. Um, but that also comes with an asterisk, right? You can do too much top end. So once you build the foundation, you have to build up. And then if you're like, I can't build up anymore. Well, now it's time to add a little bit more foundation and that's fitness. That that's the domino effect. That That's how it's going to work. Like zone two, You can build this massive foundation. It will only go so far. And so, you know, to move away from necessarily like legitimately building a house, I always go back to the pyramid example. It's like a pyramid can only be as tall as its base. And so a pyramid, you build out the foundation. Now you can build out your top end as much as you want. That pyramid is now your fitness um, through doing the other energy system training. And then if you're like, I want a bigger pyramid. Yeah, it's going to be a larger dose of zone two to widen that base again, and then also add in more of that top end. And you just keep going through that process and you'll get fitter and fitter and fitter. That's how you improve your VO2 max and everything else. Uh, but yeah, if you just only ever do zone two, uh, you're like, you got this great foundation. You're just not building up. And I think, uh, that was definitely a realization for me last year too. Yeah. I was caught into sort of a zone two loop. And I think it was, I think it was affecting my, my form, my speed, my everything. So that even when I went to go run fast, I just, it was just so hard to run fast because I wasn't used to running fast. Yeah. That's, I think I told you, um, yeah. And I mentioned on the podcast, like when I would run fast, all my like run dynamics got good. Like they were just, I think because of my sprinting yeah. background, it's like I run fast and it's like, oh, your cadence is good. Your vertical oscillation is good. Like everything looks good. But when I would run zone two, everything was trash, just like as bad as it could be. And I do think that that was, that was com- like finding its way into my faster runs. But now that I've kind of fixed it on my slower runs, um, my fast runs have been very interesting. Running this higher cadence at like a much faster pace has been crazy. I honestly feel like I've been trying to describe it to people. It feels like I'm, I'm riding something like I, like I'm on a scooter because, um, like if I'm going like, let's say I'm between 180 and 190 steps per minute, which is really high cadence, but I'm also running, let's say a six forty five mile pace. Um, I honestly feel like I'm on a scooter just like going down the road. Cause like a scooter, there's no vertical oscillation, right? You're just like, it's super smooth. You're going down the road. That's what it feels like when I'm running other than like, yeah, my heart's beating and like, it's hard to do. It's harder than riding a scooter, but it feels that smooth when I have my cadence dialed in, uh, and I'm going at a really fast, fast speed. It's very interesting. I have never experienced that in running my whole life. I think my running my whole life has always been kind of a, uh, a 
mental toughness combined with grit and pounding the pavement. It's just like, yeah, yeah. running sucks. Everybody knows running sucks. So this is just what I'm going to do. But you can make it suck a little bit less by imp improving your form. That's for sure. For sure. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, that's it for this one, everybody. Um, we will end it here. If you want to be a part of Garage Gym Athlete, go to garagegymathlete.com, start a free trial. We would love to have you. For all of our athletes who've been around, thank you so much for being an athlete. Remember, if you don't kill comfort, comfort will kill you.